Sitting all day puts a tremendous burden on the lower back. The reason is this. This is the pelvis from the side. This is a forward anterior tilt when the pelvic rocks forward. This is the posterior pelvic tilt when it rocks backwards. While he's sitting, while the majority of people who sit without support in the lower back, the pelvic has a tendency to rock backwards. When it rocks backwards, the lumbar lordosis, the normal curve that you have in the lower back, starts to become straightened. So as it becomes straightened, the weight bearing of your upper torso is coming down on the discs. As it comes on the discs, putting more pressure within the nucleus, pushing backwards, pushing backwards upon the outside fibers of that disc, causing potential weakness over, over time. The issue here is that once this pelvic tilt goes back, and once you lose this lumbar lordosis from here to here, you start getting compensatory changes. The thoracic spine starts to become more accentuated, starts to come over more, and as the head starts to lose its, its cervical lordosis, as it actually starts to protrude forward. So you can see the kinetic chain that when one thing becomes off, everything above starts to follow. The difference here is that if we take a lumbar pillow and we put it in his lower back area, go and sit back, and we fulfill that, that lumbar curve, naturally the pelvic from going posterior sits more in a neutral anterior in a forward pelvic tilt slightly, getting back to the way it should be because there's now support. And by that happening, you stabilize the normal lumbar curve, stabilize a kyphotic curve normally in the thoracic spine, and you prevent the head from going forward. So when I take the pillow out, go ahead and sit back, you'll notice right away as he crunches, you can feel his belly kind of protrude out. He feels less support in the lower back, causing the thoracic spine to round, more kyphotic or kyphosis. And you can look at his ears. His ears sit much more anterior than the shoulders, putting excessive stress upon the neck muscles behind the skull, as well as making uh, the muscles in the front uh, of the stabilizing muscles in the front of the throat become much weaker. So basically, what I like you to do, most important thing, when you're sitting with no support, what I want Aaron to do right now, it's kind of hard for you to see this, but I want him to kind of arch the back a little bit and bring the shoulders, bring the pelvic forward. There you go. Okay, rock the pelvic back again. There you go. Now watch here. Okay, go again. Rock forward. Good. Rock back. Okay, rock forward. So when you rock forward with the pelvis, from here to here, when you're rocking forward, you, you sustain that normal curve because what he feels, he feels that curve is now being locked out once he brings the pelvic forward. Correct, Aaron? Right. Okay. So I want you to keep this in mind that realize that if you, don't, if you don't have a good support in your lower back, the pelvic is getting into a posterior pelvic tilt, putting excessive load upon the discs, and over time, those annular fibers around the disc are going to become weaker and weaker, making you more susceptible, susceptible to have bulging and herniated discs. Now, obviously, any time you have excessive load on a disc, over time it becomes weaker and you get more degenerative changes. So it's very important to understand that these discs do not have the circulatory changes, does not have the vascularity as it did when you were a child, and the only way it's going to get its nutrition is through diffusion and osmosis. So you got to take care of it or it's not going to take care of you. Make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.